Let's do one more. Uh, we'll do the angle bracket. I'm going to go through this one a little quicker. Uh, that first one was more for, for beginners. This one I'll go through a little quicker. Um, but it's gonna. this is going to be the same process. So let's do a live solve here of the angle bracket. I want to, of course, thank Solid Box uh, for sponsoring these, these live solves or these tutorials. Let's do a live solve here of the angle bracket. And the goal for this thing is to determine what is the mass of this part in XXX grams. Uh, the tolerance here is going to be plus or minus one gram. It's in plain carbon steel, MMGS. So once again, we have to decide what's going to be our starting plane, our starting profile, what's going to be kind of our plan for this thing. And when we're looking at a model like this, I think what's important is that we recognize that we've got center line symmetry here going right up through the middle of the part. And so you could actually make the case to create this part by sketching this profile here on the front plane. Um, extruding it mid plane and then adding the full round fillet here on this end of the part. And I think that's a pretty good plan. The other approach that you could take might be to draw this shape looking down from the top. So on the top plane, creating this shape here and, uh, and then extruding that shape to the wall thickness that's specified here of seven millimeters. And I think that's a great plan as well. So either plan is good for our starting plane, our starting profile. You know, I like both of them. I think I'm gonna use the latter where I draw the top down footprint. If you're ever not sure where to begin, a lot of times just picking the top down footprint is a good solution. The other thing that we wanna do with this model is we wanna recognize where the origin should be. And I think that in a model like this, you know, it's either going to be right here at the center of these holes or it's going to be back here at this location. Either one of those is a good location, but they both just really jump out at me just because there's a lot of uh, dimensional information, particularly coming from this location here. So either one of those is a good, good uh, selection for the location of our origin. Let's get into it here and see if we can't build this part. Again, I want to thank the crew over at Solid Box for sponsoring these live solves. If you ever uh, need any kind of hardware, be sure to talk to the crew over at Solid Box, mysolidbox.com. So let's start a new part here. And once we start the new part, we want to make sure we're working with the correct units. Remember that down here in the status bar, there's a shortcut to pick your units. So if you ever find that your part uh, is working with the incorrect units, you can use that little shortcut. That's a great time saver as well. Top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view. I'm going to press the S key and jump into the line command. And I'm going to create a line here that has a length of 38 using the auto dimension functionality. So if your software has auto dimension functionality, that can be another really good time saver. Most software does have something similar to that. And so it's definitely worth it to learn how to use uh, that functionality. I'm gonna pick this point here, which is the origin. I'm gonna hold control. I'm gonna pick this line and I'm gonna let go of control and make that midpoint. That gives me the, uh, the tombstone centered on the origin. And then I'm gonna go into smart dimension. I use the S key to launch smart dimension there. And then I'm holding shift. So I'm, I'm doing a, a couple of things here with my left hand. I'm pressing the S key, starting the smart dimension, picking this line here. Then I'm holding shift. And then I'm picking the arc. And that way I can pick right at the tangency point of the arc instead of having the uh, dimension go to the center of the arc. I'm gonna give that a value of 80 and then extrude. So S key extrude and extrude that up to a height of seven, enter, enter. Now I'm ready to create uh, maybe the, uh, the revolved shape. So I could maybe create uh, this shape over here, this kind of revolved shape that's sticking up through the top. I could do that as two extrusions or I could do it as a revolve. I'm gonna do it as a revolve. So front plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, sketch a center line for my revolve. Jump into the line command, again, using the S key. Bring a line over here, all the way out to that point. Uh, come up to a height of, I'm not sure how much. Uh, come over, come up to a height of seven. Come over, come down here. Uh, this is gonna go down to a height of 19. Um, and then come all the way down to the bottom. And that height of 19 is gonna lock right into this edge here. Uh, finally, I need to specify a diameter of 26 for this location here, and then features revolve. And there we go. That gives us that kind of upper revolved region. I'm gonna go to uh, this face here, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm gonna sketch a rectangle. This rectangle is gonna have the auto dimensions at 30 by 10. And then I'm gonna S key extrude that rectangle and pick this point here. So that extrusion goes right up to that point. And then I'm gonna right mouse button and finish that command. 
So these are uh, these are some good little shortcuts, you know, for this example. Maybe I'm just giving you a little preview, but definitely worth looking into. Here I'm using S key, uh, jumping into the fillet command and typing in the appropriate radii for these fillets. Going to come over here to this edge of the part, begin to sketch, orient my view, and create a tombstone shape. So begin a line that comes up here like so. Come around here. Uh, this is going to have a radius of 13 over 2. And then I will close off that tombstone shape. This is going to be uh, vertical, vertically centered from the origin. So I pick the origin, hold control, pick this point and make them vertical. And then there's going to be one final dimension. Hold shift here to get the top of that tombstone. And that's going to be at 17 millimeters. And we'll extrude cut that right mouse button through all right mouse button. And then we'll finish up up top here with a 16 millimeter through hole. So select a face, begin a sketch, orient the view, S key. We're going to go here to this diameter of 16, S key, extrude cut, right mouse button through all right mouse button. And that time I missed the right mouse button on the end. So I just went into the menu and picked OK. So now for our material, this is going to be plain carbon steel, which is right there in my favorites. It's nice when you have those materials right in your favorites. And then finally, we're going to go to our evaluate mass properties, and we're going to come up with a mass of 299.5, which actually doesn't sound right. Ali came up with uh, 356 grams for this bracket. Oh, I missed a fillet. There we go. Missed a fillet. So here we go. Fillet. Three millimeters, had to look at my print again. Should have looked a little closer there. All right, mass properties. Uh, either way, it only added one gram. 300, I know that it was in the 300 range. All right, let's see who's right. I'll put in mine here, 300 G. Let's see what happens here. Live solve answer is, oh yeah, 300. So I didn't even need that fillet because I was at 299.5 anyway. So having that fillet on there, uh, you know, sometimes, like I said in the beginning, sometimes I make mistakes. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, but uh, on that note, I want to say thank you again so much. I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. And uh, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and um, you know, be sure to tune in for more of these live solve tutorials. Uh, these practice models are great practice, but I think being able to see how an expert goes through and solves it is also very useful.